Hey, this is Professor Triplett. Let's make this last piece here with the hole cut. And if you look closely, you can tell that this piece right here is the cutout from this piece. So we can actually use this piece as our starting point. Um, I'm going to duplicate it, Control D, and I'll just go ahead and delete the first one. And then what I'll do here is I'll actually just get rid of everything I don't need. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna just take all of these and I'll grow it once by hitting shift greater than and then I'll just grow it one more time shift greater than and then delete. So now I've got this piece right here and then I've got this piece over here and um, we can actually get rid of this because we'll just extrude this back. And if we go from a front view, we're going to see that we're a little bit off um, because we had done those bevels. So I'm just going to take the verts here and uh, I'm going to snap these down. So hold X and just snap it to the to the grid. Now, if we had thought ahead, I could have done all of this while I was modeling the other piece. I would have just um, duplicated this piece off uh, before I beveled. But since I didn't, I'm just going to snap these back. And then this should be pretty much 100% correct. Uh, and, you know, the slope being a little bit off uh, is okay because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be close enough. What I mean is, is I did bevel this down, but it doesn't have to match 100% perfect to these pieces because they are wood and they're not, they're not perfectly going to be aligned. You know, they're just kind of kind of uh, sanded down by the carpenter, if you will, and so they're not going to be 100% uh, perfect, so we don't have to worry about that. So from, if we want to get the piece out, all we have to really do is take these edges here. We can even take this edge right here, and we can go into our... Oh, I'm having a problem there. Okay, there we go. Go into this view, perspective, and... Actually, let's just go to the top view. Probably be easier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hold Shift... And then I'm going to start dragging this out. And you can see I got a new uh, faces here. And so if we go back to perspective, you can see what's happening. We're just, we basically just duplicated those or extruded them out. Let's go back to the top. And then I'm just going to hold X and I'm going to snap it to this center point right there. So now when we've done that, you can see we've got this left over. This to here. And that's what we want. So I'm going to hit Control Shift I, inverse my selection, and then just hit Delete. And that's strange. It's basically didn't select it correctly. I'm not sure why. There we go. That's what we wanted. Okay, so now we've got this piece. And you may be wondering, why did I leave this piece here? Well, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you select this piece and you hit D on your keyboard, you can change a temp, you can make a temporary alignment of your pivot for just rotating this. So I'm going to hold V on my keyboard and make sure I'm locked into just this x-axis. So I'm just clicking on the x-axis and I'm going to just kind of roll my mouse over to here while I'm holding V. So it's just snapped it in between these two verts. And now I can hit D again and then I can go and hit my uh, rotate tool, so E, and then just hold J. I can just rotate this over 90 degrees. So let's make sure we've got it lined right. I'll go to my front view. Yep, that's perfectly straight. And so now we basically got the bottom of that. I just wanted to show that you can do stuff like that. This, I would actually probably just end up just uh, extruding an edge down here. That'd be the easiest way. Um, but I just wanted to show that that's a possibility. So now I'm going to grab this edge and this edge. I'm just going to go ahead and do a bridge like so. And so now we basically have the outline of our piece that we need, but we have to get our normals facing the right direction because right now they're uh, going in the wrong direction. So let's go ahead and just go to mesh display reverse. So now they're facing out, that's what we want. And then we can go to just object mode and you can see my pivots still over here. Okay, so um, what I actually want is my pivots eventually gonna be up here. So I'm going to show a little trick. I have my pivot in the right spot as far as the object goes, but I can come into the faces. And if you move the faces, it doesn't change the object's pivot. 
So I can actually come into here and just get my rotate out and snap my rotation around like so. And then I can snap it around like so. And then I can just uh, come down here and I can start moving this down, but when I get to the bottom, I'm not gonna know if I'm hitting the bottom or not, unless I change that pivot again. So I just hit D on my keyboard. So this is my temporary pivot. I'm just gonna move that down to the corner here, hit D again, and now I can hit X and I can snap these polygons right to the bottom there. Now, again, I did not move the object's pivot, but when we get out, you'll see the object's pivot was, is in the exact same spot. When we go back into this, you see now um, you, I lost that temporary pivot that I get when I move it around when I'm in poly mode. So just, just be aware of that's how it works, that you will lose that temporary pivot because uh, typically um, when you're in the components like this grabbing stuff, it's always going to be at the center of the component unless you move it manually. Okay. So anyway, so I did that and um, these are all joined together. You can see it pretty much matches up with our our reference if we want to make it more we could just go to vertices and drag marquee so now i've got both both verts i can pull this out a little bit if i want you know pull this out a little bit you can see actually we've got a little bit of a problem here see this angle right here well that's because i never moved this one where it should be this one i snapped where where it was supposed to be but this one i didn't so let's just do that now so i'm going to hold v Make sure you're locked on just the one axis and then move your cursor up here. So there we go. Now that's aligned properly. And let me take this right here. If we want, we can move it over a little bit. I'm going to leave that one alone. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, these are cuts of wood. No two cuts are going to be exactly the same. And that's just the way it's going to be. And if we want for right now, we can uh, turn off our texture. Uh, by just hitting five on our keyboard and that way we won't see this um, or uh, we can just put a new texture on there if we want uh, a blank material so if I want assign uh, existing material I can just put the original Lambert on there and then that way I can have my reference out so five oh I accidentally applied it to both of those so let me uh, undo I just undid a few times let me do this again so we're gonna go to um, Existing material Lambert, but I don't want this one to have that. So now we hit six. There we go. We got it back. Okay. So now the question is, how do we put this hole in there? Now a lot of people have been doing booleans, and that's one approach you can do. This um, probably one of the fastest ways you can do it is go edge, grab all these edges here. You can do it on both sides if you want, and just do a fill hole. So mesh fill the hole, and then you can make a um, cylinder, line it up, and all that good stuff. But actually, I think we should probably undo that and make the cylinder first so we can see where we're going to put it. And my cylinder, I want it to be 8. Uh, I don't always use 8 for everything, but for this one, I think it's going to work better uh, just because I need to tie in uh, the edges here with the geometry here and there's not a ton of geometry so i think eight's going to work well and you'll see how this works in a second so i'm going to go ahead and make my height 3.5 or more uh, since we're going to do a boolean let's actually make it more let's make it like four let's take that back let's just make it like six and we'll just move this to the middle here and then i'm going to bring this up here. Let's go to our front view. And you can see the hole is actually pretty much the perfect size hole for this. Uh, I mean, this cylinder is the same size as the hole practically. So that's good. So now I have that aligned. Now I can do that, that fill hole because now I, I was able to see what I was doing. That was why I got rid of the fill hole the first time. So now I can go like this and just go fill hole and then I can grab these two and go object object and then let's before you do this you should really delete your history just delete your history and make sure everything's clean maybe even save your file sometimes bullions can get wonky and then I can just go um, mesh boolean and then difference okay so I did the wrong one so I gotta grab 
I have to grab this one first, then this one, I'm sorry, this one first, this one next, and then do a difference. So I grabbed them in the wrong order. So make sure your, your main piece is white uh, and the other piece was green. All right, so now that we have this hole here, let's, let's see what's going on. So if I go ahead and I bring this to Sketchfab, Sketchfab is not going to know what to do with all of these um, these n-gons. Like this is basically a huge n-gon, and uh, I mean you can solve the problem by going to like mesh triangulate, and you know now we've got this triangulated mesh, which will work, but it's not really clean geometry, and that's not really what we're looking. So let's go ahead and clean up the geometry and make it all quads. So I'm going to go into my front view and I'm going to take my cut tool out and I'm just going to hold shift and I'm going to drag across right here and let go. And what that did is when you drag from the outside holding shift, it's going to just do a straight cut that goes all the way through the model. So you can see right here, it went all the way through. Oh, so it didn't get this last part there. Uh, didn't like that. That's okay. We'll, we'll do this. Um, so for right now, let's just delete these back faces because we can just mirror these over later. Apparently this one didn't have the problem. Um, but if, let's bring that back. If you did have a problem there like that, uh, you can simply, like if this is happening in your front face, you can simply grab these two and just hit connect. And then there we get a, now it's like changing things. See, and this is the issue that we run into with Booleans is that Sometimes you get some wonky, weird stuff that's going on. So um, at this point, I think we could hide our reference so we can see things better. So I'm going to hit Control A to get to my layers. Yeah, so now we can see that better. So Booleans are going to give you kind of these unpredictable results. And, um, and you can even see right here, like it gave me this odd vert right here that I would have to backspace to get rid of. Um, and of course, like I said, an end gone, it's going to be a big problem. So eventually you're going to have to basically come into here and start connecting these. So let's go to my modeling toolkit and I can just hit connect. You can do this with your cut tool as well. Oh, look at that. Isn't that great? Well, there you go. This is the issues that you can get with Booleans. It just sometimes acts wonky. All right. So, um, Let's see if I can get rid of that. Sometimes you can just come here, oops, let's see, and cut, and nope, it's not liking it. So it's actually reading like there's nothing there. I come here, go here, and click here, hit enter. You see here, this is this is the the quintessential issue um, that you get with bullies. Now this side, believe it or not, actually will probably work a lot better. I probably won't get those kind of errors because. Uh, Maya solved this in a better way and is correcting the boolean, you know, by adding these edges in here. The edges that it added in here are actually tying it to the other pieces, uh, the other polygons and stuff. So this is why uh, you heard me say, and a lot of people say booleans are terrible um, in ways that they are. And, you know, if you know how to use them and where to use them, they can be okay. But if you don't, then it, they can be problematic. So let me show you a different way. So um, you know, well, let's do this. Let's finish this one off and then I will show you a different way to do it on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish this and we'll click back to that. Remember, we're trying to get rid of all the end gods. Okay. Now, so here I'm going to hold control and click right here because I need to tie this into an edge so I can have all quads. I got the same problem right here too. So I'm going to go like this and hold control, click it there. And then I'm just going to cut from, oops, didn't like that, bad angle. Cut from there to there, hit enter. And so now this thing's all tied together. Everything's quads and that'll work except for this piece right there. We don't really need that anymore. So let's just get rid of it. Okay, so let's take a different approach on this side here. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to just slice this down the middle and I'm going to take all these faces right here and we're just going to detach these and treat this like a different model. So edit mesh, extract, and then 
So let's just take this one. I'll just kind of slide that off. And then this one, we're going to delete this face, pretend that we never did the Boolean, okay? And let's get rid of that. And let's bring, we'll make another uh, cylinder here. Let's just rotate it like this. Give it the same properties we gave the other one. Let's make it eight sides. Eight, and it was 3.5 or, well, 3.5 is, is half the distance, so, um, Let's see where we're at. So if we cut that in half, or 3.5 is the distance from, from this point to the center. So if we cut 3.5 in half, it would be 1.75, right? So we can go ahead and say height 1.75. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, move the pivot point here. So hit D on my keyboard and snap to, to the edge right here, and then hit D again. And now I'm going to just snap this. So it's right there. So you can see that matches up perfectly. All right, let's get our reference back, which is that one. Go to our front view. And we're just gonna move this up right there. This is just a different approach. You know, if you don't wanna deal with the dirty problems of a bullying, you can do things this way. So I just deleted out those center pieces. I don't need those. This is actually, I'm going to reverse this, so mesh this way, reverse, because I'm actually going to combine these two objects now. So I'm going to grab this object, this object, and I'm going to say uh, combine. Let's delete the history off, just keep it clean. And now I'm going to basically just start bridging these edges together. So I can basically kind of look at this and say, well, which edge should go to which? That's the question. So I'm thinking this edge to here looks pretty good. So I'll just do a bridge. And then I can basically just kind of go like this. Oops, this front one. We can grab three there, do that all at one time, maybe even four. Let's get this one too. And just go, I think we're missing one there. There we go, hopefully that works. I think I got all the right ones. Oh. Uneven amount of sides. Why aren't they letting me grab that? There we go. I thought I had grabbed it. Okay, so as long as you have the same number of sides on each side, it will work. Grab this and this and do a bridge there. Okay, and now um, we'll want to bridge across here first. And I'll do a bridge and then I'll do a division one division and then this should be able to tie together with this piece here but if you if i grab these you'll see there's two vertices so i have to merge those because even though i i did a bridge it doesn't automatically merge those vertices so now you can see right here it says one vert because i've got my merge tool on and so i'll just hit w to drop that and now i can go back to my uh my bridge tool and just grab those faces and now there we go so it's the same results, but just different ways to get there. So I just wanted to show that you know you can kind of you can kind of approach this different ways. Like and so sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually use curves. Um, so for instance, what you could do is if I went into front view and I went and made two curves like two circles, let's do one. And I'll just rotate that so it's facing me. There we go. And then I went and did, let me just move this right in the middle of the grid and I did another one, control D. I'm just duplicating it. And then I'm gonna scale this out. You could take these two and you can loft these together as you can see right there. And so, um, Imagine if I made this shape with a curve and then I made this shape with a curve that had the same number of points. You can technically loft those two together. They may not look, um, it may not know how to connect it perfectly, but um, for certain complex objects, it might be a way to get started with making uh, a mesh, you know, uh, that has kind of like a hole cut in it. So it's just another way to do it. Um, there's also you know, you could take and put a cylinder through here and as a placeholder, just use your cut tool and cut a cylinder, like a hole right into there. That's another way to do it. So there's multiple ways. I'm just trying to show you different approaches to the same technique. 
or the same uh, outcomes. But the, the takeaway from this is going to be um, how do you, you know, how do you go ahead and do this, this whole cut with all quads so it's nice and clean? You know, that's the big, the big part of this. So uh, let's go back to our perspective view at this point, and I'm going to just grab these and I'll delete those. And then I'll take this. I'm going to just go ahead and delete the history. And I'm going to go ahead and do a mirror. So I'm going to mirror the object. It's going to mirror in the Z direction because I want it to come back to the face here. And so let's change this to Z. And then let's change this to negative because it has to go in the negative direction. And there we go. So that looks perfect. Um, I like to turn my mirror threshold on just to make sure it's not doing any weirdness there. And then I can just hit W to drop that tool. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit three on my keyboard so you can see, like, it, even though this is not proper, it's going to look pretty clean. Um, let's go ahead and grab our edges and we'll uh, make sure that we, um, we bevel this. So let me just double click there and get these last two. And at this point, we could get rid of the center uh, edge, but we will, we'll do that in a second. We can do that after we bevel, because that'll be edge loop, so we can select it easily. And let's see, we got all that. Got that, got that. Make sure you grab, oops. Be careful if you hit that extrude thing that you don't extrude on accident. Um, they added that tool in, but unfortunately, some people accidentally extrude when they click on their widget while they're holding shift. Um, it's just something to be wary of. You can probably turn that tool off if you want the uh, extrude, um, but I actually find it helpful sometimes when I'm modeling. Um, they, that tool is actually in 3D Studio Max. It's been there for a long time, and uh, I used to use it all the time. Uh, but being in Maya, I'm obviously used to doing other ways of, of getting the same results. So now that we look at this, if we went ahead and hit 3 on our keyboard to smooth it, now we're actually getting a nice... Um, let's turn the wireframe and shade it off, which is right there. So now you can see we're getting a pretty nice uh, looking cube here. So, and then if we want to get rid of this middle edge, we don't really have to have it in there. We can just get rid of that like that. And that's it. That's uh, how you would uh, take care of this. You actually get rid of this too. There we go. And that's about it. So the key is like to get all quads is you have to have these things tied in somewhere. I mean, if you're doing a static model for games, you can have triangles and stuff. But I would say if you're working for film or VFX or animation, um, make sure that you you make clean quad models. That's going to be the best way. Uh, it's going to make your your uh, demo reel look better. So let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. And all right, so we delete the history. We'll go ahead and unwrap it really quick here. Shouldn't take too long. UV editing. I'll just do an automatic unwrap like I normally do. See what it comes out with. So it kind of gave us a lot of pieces. Um, that's okay. Uh, there's a couple ways to handle this. So let me go ahead first of all, and as you know, I almost always do an unfold, and then I'll reorient the shells, make sure they're straight, and I'll pick my usually like a back like here, be like a flap. And so uh, let's just move that out a little bit so I can grab the edges. So grab this edge, double shift, double click down here. And then all I have to do is hit sew. Sorry, stitch together and do the same thing here. Stitch together. You can hit G on your keyboard to repeat the tool for most tools that works. Um, so these should be pretty good, probably need this one too. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, um, these here, I'm going to basically leave those all stitched together and just have them going straight up, up this, uh, this pipe here. So that's, that's this piece here. So let's go ahead and just grab that. Actually, am I wrong about that? Yeah, no, I'm right. Okay. So stitch together. So that comes up to here. Now you can see 
because of the projection plane, it broke it right here because what the projection plane is looking at is like, what's the greatest area? Um, which projection plane is like hitting the greatest area of each poly? And then it just uses that projection plane then. So since this top one right here was hitting the projection plane that's coming in the Y direction more, um, then it basically broke it and, you know, put that projection off somewhere else. Well, I'm going to reconnect that. Like so. And just go ahead and say stitch together like so. Let's put that texture back on here. Object mode. Go ahead and say sign existing material. And then we can just take all these faces. Rotate in the right direction. Scale it a bit down so we can fit it in here. Getting closer. Okay, there we go. So now that we've got that, oops, looks like I screwed something up. That's okay. Let's just take this and do an unfold. It'll bring it back to where it should be. Hit the orange shell. There we go. Back to where it was. Now, we have a situation going on inside here. So this little guy right here. And that's what all these little edges are. And that's okay. So we're just going to go through and I'm going to just grab these edges and I'll stitch them together. So we'll just hit stitch together and it's turning kind of funky, but we can live with that because we'll just orient it later. And I can just hit G on my keyboard. We keep doing the same tool. We hit G. There we go. So now all of those should be stitched together. Go to the faces. Let's go ahead and just unfold it one more time. Make sure it's nice and relaxed out and then hit orient shells. And then we can move this to say somewhere in that area. And then this one here, we can move to one of our ends. So let's turn this down here. So this is the this is the bottom piece. This is right down here. So just because I'm very familiar with the model uh, already, I, I knew that that was the bottom piece. Let's see, are we getting any weird edges? So next thing we definitely want to do is do our mesh display soften edges because the inside there was not softening correctly. And this looks kind of low poly here in the middle, and you may decide that you want it to be higher, and that's okay. Uh, if you if you have more cuts in here, and then you just add some more edges in, you can just tie this thing back into um, more edges. Uh, that's just going to have to be a, a decision you make. But the other thing you could do is you could just get it to this point here, and then you can just say smooth. And now, yeah, it makes it a bit more high poly, but um, you know, you, it's a fast way to get your results that you want. So um, that's, you know, that looks pretty good. And then if you want to, and you want to make it lower poly, you can remove some of these edges in here that you don't need anymore, you know. You know, all those can go and it can be a lower poly model again. Same thing on the inside, you don't need all of these. And I mean, this kind of looks ugly, you know, so, you know, if you want to leave those, those other ones in there, it'll make it more, look more even in quad, but, um, or I should say a balanced quads. Um, but you know, that's up to you. It depends on how, how heavy or light you need this thing to be in your scene. So that's about it. That's how you would unwrap this guy. Let's just turn off all the wireframe stuff and just see what we got. Looks pretty good. Let's hide that for a second. Yeah, I think that'll work. So that piece is done, and uh, we're on our way to making block castles for fun. All right, thanks for watching.